uh, going now to Mike Adams. Going back to last week, I've, I've seen this so many times. Right when Europe's trying to pass laws like our food safety bill, they've already passed Codex Alimentarius to ban most vitamins and minerals. They have a big outbreak. Uh, they have uh, other outbreaks here in the U.S., always by Big Agra in every big case, some big giant factory. And then they, Big Agra gave $17 million in one week in November to try to pass uh, the Food Safety Act, like the Patriot Act for all these names, nothing to do with that, to openly put regulations on farms, ranches, and everybody else. Just incredible, absolutely incredible uh, developments just off the charts, but it failed thanks to Ron Paul and, and listeners and folks that understood what was happening. Uh, and the SWAT teaming of the Amish, all of this is about shutting this stuff down. Uh, it, it's about creating monopolies. That's what big mega business and big agribusiness does. And so I saw this and I went, wait, what do I know about E. coli? I know it's one of the first bacteria ever engineered. I know in the mid 60s or early 60s, you just pull up manufacturing process of aspartame. The, the military engineered one that would eat toxic waste. They, they, they worked on a lot of bacteria that'll do that, like the oil eating bacteria, but this is different. And I remember the report, and you can pull it up, where uh, they took it and, and then it, what it excretes, it's, it's waste. Bacteria, you know, use the bathroom as well. Their excretia is this highly toxic, addictive, sweet substance. Like antifreeze is sweet. Everything's sweet and good. So they, and they couldn't get it approved until 1981 when Rumsfeld got it approved. Now, then I remember the, uh, the uh, virus sprays that they spray on meats they approved six years ago on E. coli. Live viruses that eat them, that destroy them. And so I know that, that E. coli is one of the most engineered bacteria out there. And they've, and they've engineered it into plants and all sorts of stuff. And so I said, you know, look for this to be some big agri disaster or something that got out of a lab because they were reporting by Friday that it appeared to be genetically engineered. Well, Mike Adams, great researcher over at naturalnews.com, joining us via video Skype. Forensic evidence emerges that European E. coli superbug was bioengineered to produce human fatalities. That's the newest article today. Yet, uh, yesterday, today he's got food wars, how European health authorities are using E. coli scare to wage economic warfare against vegetable farmers. He joins us now. Mike, uh, right as they try to pass the Cybersecurity Act and this big global UN Act to restrict free speech and take over the web and put in snooping hubs, hack attacks happen. China says it's the West doing it. Right as they try to pass these laws, th these, uh, these outbreaks always happen. I mean, this is getting pretty darn obvious. Well, you're exactly right, Alex. You've laid it out. It's classic problem, reaction, solution. They're using it in uh, in every area, and but especially in agriculture. Every time they want to pass more food regulations, they engineer another disaster and they create a fear campaign. And there are so many agendas that are that they can then pursue with this fear. It's not just to enable them to enact new food regulations and tyrannical legislation and crack down on small farms and you know raid the Amish at gunpoint and things like that. It's also the fact that they can retaliate against Spain. Because remember, Spain stood up against the GMO agenda. Spain said, we don't want GMOs in our country, even as, and this came out of WikiLeaks, by the way, even as the U.S. was working on a plan to force European nations to accept GMOs, this is now retaliation. In a matter of less than a week, they have destroyed much of Spain's agricultural economy, at least those farmers engaged in fresh vegetable farming. So this is an act of economic warfare on that front. It's an act of biological warfare against the innocent victims who are now being harmed by this bacteria strain, which is clearly, it has clearly been bioengineered, and we could probably get into more of that evidence. By the way, all, two and a half years ago, we broke down that the flu was engineered, and they because we had documents previous when they engineered the H1N1, hiding in plain view, the London Telegraph article where uh, 30 homeless people in one place, given the shot, died. Uh, the live uh, bird flu virus that killed the ferrets in, in, uh, in the vaccines in 12 countries where they did the test. I mean, we have this long history and you have thousands of biotech companies splicing bacteria with animal, insect, top experts saying it can give rise to mutations. And then immediately when we see some, and the, and the media is saying it, it appears to be genetically engineered, uh, it, it's been altered. Uh, they try to blame farmers for it. 
And then it, all, it always comes out later. It's either a something that got loose or was manufactured or it's something that mutated. I, I mean, I know you've written about the virus spray. They spray on meat that attacks the E. coli. Yeah. Well, it's incredible what they're doing here. We, we're watching a circus, a circus of fear mongering. They screamed cucumbers and everybody stopped buying cucumbers. Then they screamed tomatoes. Then they screamed lettuce. And it, it's like we're watching a circus of health regulator lunatics who are running around destroying food industries, destroying the, the, the economics of farmers one by one. It's like I wrote, it's like a Godzilla marching through the city, stomping on farmers' tents at the farmer's markets. They're just destroying this industry with no credibility. And they're saying we've got to have government inspectors. You've got to have yeah. a license to grow anything because your tomato might kill somebody. But in every case I see, it's never little farms that do it. It's always big mega agra. That's right. And today, Wall Street Journal broke this article, which we just wrote about also, that says it's not the sprouts. Just until this morning, they were blaming the organic sprouts from northern Germany. Well, they ran tests on that, and the tests all came up negative. So it's not the sprouts. That's Even the key. The they media, keep blaming a string of organic industry. Right. They, they do. And the, the media in the UK was printing quotes from people based on this fear who were saying, oh, I'm never eating organic again. Well, that's the reaction they want you to have because they want you to be afraid of vegetables. They want you to be afraid of small farms. They want you to be afraid of fresh food because then you'll buy processed dead foods that keep you sick and keep you a customer of the pharmaceutical industry. Well, notice, notice, uh, 50 years ago, they went and harassed normal milk out of existence because they wanted to be able to boil it and sell bad milk to people. You, before yes. you got fresh milk delivered to your door, who wants that service? Statistically, it's much safer than the garbage they sell. Uh, I, I mean, it's the same on every front. Problem, reaction, solution. It's the one trick these guys do over and over again. And you, and you go over the evidence of this. I mean, this stuff it has resistance to everything. Uh, go over your articles. Well, you're right. There's something called a genetic analysis of the E. coli strain. And genetic analysis is actually quite advanced from a technical point of view. You can determine what the strain was exposed to in its history to create the current strain. And when you look at this, and that was done by the Robert Koch Institute in Germany, their scientists broke down the genetics of this E. coli strain. It's called O104. And if you look at it, you can read the history, and the history doesn't lie. This strain was exposed repeatedly to all the eight major classes of antibiotics that are sold by the, the drug companies today. This practically guarantees that this is going to cause acute kidney failure, that it's going to cause fatalities in the hospitals. And in fact, this particular strain was engineered with a couple of extra genes that give it even more power. It's like a super powerful, deadly super bug. And the fact is, Alex, this could not have been created randomly in nature with some kind of random mutation. Impossible. It had to have been engineered and then introduced into the food supply in some way. I don't know where it was introduced. We don't know that yet. The story is still developing. I know you're covering it. Well, Maybe it's like the anthrax. Uh, years later, it comes out. Super U.S. government weaponized. Three different patsies they tried to blame. Uh, the last guy they killed in custody, and then that wasn't even a news item. It was Barry that he died in custody. Oh, he did it. And it turned out it was U.S. government. It took hundreds of millions of dollars of equipment to even miniaturize it. And they blamed it on al-Qaeda. I mean, yeah. it, it, it never ends. I mean, it's simple. We have a big criminal structure. And any time they want to shut an industry down or consolidate something, they stage an event. I mean, it wasn't hard to predict there'd be massive hack attacks against governments and industry right as they try to pass the total Internet kill switch media takeover with government messages over your email and cell phone. And magically it happens right as Obama is set to announce his assault weapons ban and gun show shutdown uh, legislation. Uh, the head of Al Qaeda pops out and says, yes, you have too many guns. Muslims get the guns and kill people. Go to the gun shows. I mean, it's it's so ridiculously predictable. Well, and also because it's so effective. The public who, who isn't aware of all of this, they don't understand the dynamics. They don't know about problem, reaction, solution. They are so easily hoodwinked that this tactic works.
for the global elite. So of course they use it over and over again every time they want to pass a new regulation or clamp down on another freedom or convince people to be afraid of something. They can simply engineer it. And now the evidence of this engineering is in the genetic code of the E. coli itself. You can't argue with that. It's written in the DNA. Now, why isn't the mainstream media reporting this? Well, once again, because they're on the side of the global elite who are trying to fool people into thinking that fresh vegetables are, are harmful to you and that we need more food safety regulations and we need more clamping down on small organic farmers. That's the opposite of what we need. We need more local food, small organic farms, and less processed, mechanized, factory-made foods. From and let's the be clear farms. why they get radiation, uh, radiating in the food past. Why this six years ago they got it passed to spray live viruses that, quote, eat the bacteria. They admit it so they can feed you rotten meat, but radiate it so the bacteria aren't live, but you still get the toxins they've excreted. Uh, they come out with the uh, vaccines that they live vaccines a virus bath and uh, the name of the virus in latin is uh, translated as bacteria eating virus the flanges they 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 spray those on there and if you're a new listener folks i'm not joking just search e uh, fda approves uh, bacteria eating viruses to be sprayed on meat and then that gives rise to mutations, just like uh, antibiotics overuse makes the bacteria get more and more hardy. But this one's had a bunch of stuff added to it out of the clear blue with the media then blaming all the organic farmers. Notice no big agribusiness. It has all the telltale signs of the frame up and they just continue to do this, Mike. It, 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 it's horrible. Well, a lot of people don't realize this has been going on for such a long time. For example, you can't buy raw almonds grown in America anymore. I know you covered this, Alex, but some of your listeners may not be aware of it. The FDA and the California State Almond Board came in and said you have to fumigate or irradiate the almonds to effectively kill them before you can sell them to American consumers. And why do they do that? Because raw almonds are a type of superfood. In fact, they contain an anti-cancer element that's part of an anti-cancer formula used in Chinese medicine. So one by one, they're going after the foods that can keep people healthy. They're banning the herbs in the EU. I mean, that's already a done deal. Banning the vitamins, the supplements. The by the way, herbs. folks never believed us when we told them about Codex yeah. Alimentarius that was in the bill, the Food Safety Act last year. I mean, people go, well, they wouldn't ban the hundreds of over-the-counter vitamins and herbs yes they did it's happening wake up folks it, it is happening Every, it's it's week by week we find another example of some outrageous accusation against supplements or herbs or organic foods i mean the fact that this whole thing was blamed on germany's organic sprout growers and that now that's completely false but the damage is done alex you know they can't retract that People all over Germany have stopped buying sprouts all over the UK. I mean, this has affected 10 nations in Europe, and the authorities can just shout out a vegetable and everybody will stop buying it. Carrots. Oh, all of a sudden, no one's buying carrots anymore. Lettuce. No more lettuce. Spinach. No more spinach. I mean, this, this is economic warfare against the vegetables. And they know farmers. what they're doing. They just randomly move. They could go test in minutes and, and see if it's that E. coli strain. They don't care. They knowingly every day throw out a new thing to scare everybody. But don't worry. We've got GMO that's safe. We've got irradiated produce, which they're now starting to do. Uh, we've gassed all your produce with sodium fluoride gas. Everything's okay now. We've killed all the food so it's safe. We've taken that raw milk. We're taking that cheese from raw milk. We're taking all those vitamins and minerals from you, and we're going to give you McDonald's food that doesn't even decompose uh, when left on a plate for six months. Well, and it's amazing, too. If they had not taken away raw milk, people could drink the raw milk and get the probiotics from the raw milk, which populate your intestinal flora, which crowd out these dangerous E. coli strains. So raw milk can actually help protect you against these. That's outbreaks. right. People eating all the studies show you're mentioning. The bubble boy, you know, he couldn't handle stuff from the outside. Well, it's the opposite. People that have a dog or another animal, it shows you get more buffer flora and are much healthier. It's it's the kids that play in the dirt that are healthier throughout life. That's right. All these people eating dead foods have dead stomachs and are wide open to invading bacteria. 
they're living in a more and more in a sterile environment. Even parents, they're afraid to have their kids go outside and touch the dirt, you know? Oh, the evil dirt, how terrible. Well, other science shows that if you're in the dirt and you actually inhale some of the dirt microbes, they increase your cognitive function. They make you smarter. And they also boost your immune function. We need more probiotics. We need more living foods. But instead, the global elite, they're just taking them away one by one, destroying the market. Do they know why breathing in dirt? As I saw that new scientist reported on that last year, why breathing uh, microbes in dirt makes you smarter. It's, it's, uh, it's I guess, it triggers some enzyme reaction or the olfactory is excited by it and it causes neural connections to open. I, I know they're not, they don't know why. I'm speculating. Mike Adams, naturalnews.com. Stay with us. Final segment straight ahead right here on the GCN Radio Network. A ton of key news at GCNlive.com. I want to remind new listeners that over 4,000 American foster children in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s were radiated to death knowingly in radiation tests by the U.S. government. Europe did the same thing. Israel did the same thing. Israel, you know, to their children as well. You think Israel doesn't care about mowing down Palestinians. They don't care about frying their own kids. Same thing with our government. You know about the syphilis and the black men shooting them up with it. Now you know about it in Latin America, shooting the kids up. The U.N. constantly caught giving people polio, claiming it's a vaccine. So, of course, they would release a weaponized E. coli. In fact, it even came out that back, what was it, in 2001 or 2000, the British government had done a drill and was the source of the weaponized foot and mouth. That was used to target and knock out uh, so many of the farmers there. So, yes, these are ruthless killers who want a scientific dictatorship. There's very small numbers of them at the top who use the bureaucracy to, to carry this out. Remember Rick Perry trying to force Gardasil that they knew was killing girls in trials on the children of Texas. I mean, folks, we're not just here saying, oh, the government did this. We've learned to watch them. We've learned to study them. We've learned to see who they target. This is 100% stage, Mike Adams. Mike, how long will they go on with the deaths in Germany and the deaths in Europe and the hyping uh, government takeover of everything? Well, they will try to milk this for as much play as they can get. They want to spread as much fear as possible so that they can come in with the reaction solution and have people call for more food regulations. And, of course, they're going to crack down on the organic farms and the vegetable producers. And if this doesn't do what they want, They'll just stage another one, Alex. You know, look, it, if you get back to the genetic code of this strain of E. coli, you have to ask who has the technical ability to create this because that will point you to who's doing it. And it's really only the drug companies or the government infectious disease organizations such as the CDC in the United States. Similar organizations across Europe have that capacity. Maybe a university has the capacity, but this is really more of an expert creation of a bioengineered strain of E. coli. Now, if they do trace it back to a food, something like lettuce, let's say, then you have to ask, well, how did it get in the lettuce? Well, that's a simple matter. They could have taken dried E. coli powder and dropped it into a shipment of lettuce or dropped it into a shipment of seeds going to the sprouting company. They could have injected it into the food supply at any point so that they can target a specific food to blame for the outbreak. It's a simple By the matter. way, British intelligence is saying Al-Qaeda might be involved. No proof, but maybe Adam Gadon uh, will pop up and tell us uh, he did it. Maybe bin Laden did it, Alex. <laughs> he swam back out of the ocean and dropped some E. coli on the Germans. I mean, who knows what they're going to come up with next? Uh, any, they could come up with anything, and people would believe it. That's the thing. People are believing this in the mainstream, but, of course, fortunately, more and more people are waking up in the alternative media and realizing that that story doesn't make sense. The real story is the story that we're explaining here. This has been engineered. Well, what's the tipping point, though, when the alternative becomes the mainstream I see that beginning to happen, and that's why the ruling establishment, the social engineers, are bum-rushing society on every front. That's why old Hades is starting to break loose. They're attempting to create enough chaos to pose as saviors to keep themselves in place. 
Yeah, the tipping point is coming. More and more people are waking up, and those who aren't are frankly dying from things like E. coli or from things like vaccines. I had a guy tell me recently, hey, he thinks vaccines are a global IQ test, and those who fail the IQ test end up with infertility from vaccines or GMOs or fluoride. I mean, that's that's one way to look at it. Not not my favorite way to look at it, but they're testing people. Hey, sure. I, was, I was out this weekend in public. And I was with my children at a restaurant. It was packed. And I was looking at children who were seven, eight, nine years old. And they, they all talked like they were retarded and acted like they were retarded, all mildly autistic. And I was looking at everybody. They were like hit by a mutation ray. Folks, this is scary. Mike Adams, thank you so much. Retransmission starts now. PrisonPlanet.tv.